The Solemnity of Our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the Universe, commonly referred to as the Feast of Christ the King, is a relatively recent addition to the Western liturgical calendar, having been instituted in 1925 by Pope Pius XI for the Roman Catholic Church. In 1970 its Roman Catholic observance was moved to the final Sunday of Ordinary Time. Therefore, the earliest date on which it can occur is 20 November and the latest is 26 November. Traditional Catholics observe it on its original date, the last Sunday of October. The Anglican, Lutheran, and many other Protestant churches adopted it along with the Revised Common Lectionary, occasionally referring to it as Christ the King Sunday. It is also observed on the same computed date as the final Sunday of the ecclesiastical year, the Sunday before the first Sunday of Advent, by Western Rite parishes of the Russian Orthodox Church outside Russia. Roman Catholics adhering to the extraordinary form of the Roman Rite as permitted under the motu proprio summorum pontificum use the general Roman calendar of 1960, and as such continue to observe the solemnity on its original date of the final Sunday of October. In 2018, it is celebrated on 25 November. <inaudible> Origin and history in the Roman Catholic Church Pope Pius XI instituted the Feast of Christ the King in his encyclical letter Quas Primas of 1925, in response to growing secularism and in the context of the unresolved Roman question. According to Cyril of Alexandria, Christ has dominion over all creatures less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 by essence and by nature. His kingship is founded upon the hypostatic union. T he word of God, as consubstantial with the Father, has all things in common with him, and therefore has necessarily supreme and absolute dominion over all things created. From this it follows that to Christ angels and men are subject. Christ is also king by acquired, as well as by natural right, for he is our redeemer. We are no longer our own property, for Christ has purchased us. With a great price. Our very bodies are the members of Christ. A third ground of sovereignty is that God bestowed upon Christ the nations of the world as his special possession and dominion. Quote, all power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Matthew chapter 28 verse 18. The feast has an eschatological dimension pointing to the end of time when the kingdom of Jesus will be established in all its fullness to the ends of the earth. It also leads into Advent when the church commemorates the arrival of the newborn king. Topic: <laughs> Calendar. Topic: The title of the feast was Domini Nostri Jesu Christi Regis, Our Lord Jesus Christ the King, and the date was established as the last Sunday of the month of October, the Sunday, that is, which immediately precedes the Feast of All Saints. In Pope St. John XXIII's revision of the calendar in 1960, the date and title were unchanged but, according to the simplification of the ranking of feasts, it was classified as a feast of the first class. In his Motu Proprio Mysterii Pascalis of 1969, B.L. Pope Paul VI amended the title of the feast to D. N. I. E. S. U. Christi Universorum Regis, Our Lord Jesus Christ King of the Universe. He also moved it to the new date of the final Sunday of the liturgical year, before the commencement of a new liturgical year on the first Sunday of Advent, the earliest date for which is the 27th of November. Through this choice of date, the eschatological importance of this Sunday is made clearer. He assigned to it the highest rank of solemnity. In the extraordinary form, as happens with all Sundays whose liturgies are replaced by those of important feasts, the prayers of the Sunday on which the celebration of the Feast of Christ the King occurs are used on the ferias weekdays of the following week. The Sunday liturgy is thus not totally omitted. In 2018, the Solemnity Day falls on the 25th of November or the 28th of October for those using the traditional calendar. The liturgical vestments for the day are colored white or gold, in keeping with other joyous feasts honoring Christ. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Significance for the laity. Topic: 
while the encyclical that established this feast was addressed, according to the custom of the time, to the Catholic bishops, Pope Pius XI wanted the feast to impact the laity. If to Christ our Lord is given all power in heaven and on earth, if all men, purchased by his precious blood, are by a new right subjected to his dominion, if this power embraces all men, it must be clear that not one of our faculties is exempt from his empire. He must reign in our minds, which should assent with perfect submission and firm belief to revealed truths and to the doctrines of Christ. He must reign in our wills, which should obey the laws and precepts of God. He must reign in our hearts, which should spurn natural desires and love God above all things, and cleave to Him alone. He must reign in our bodies and in our members, which should serve as instruments for the interior sanctification of our souls, or to use the words of the Apostle Paul, as instruments of justice unto God. <laughs> Observance in other churches Topic. Those churches that use the Revised Common Lectionary observe Christ the King Sunday as the final Sunday of their liturgical years. These churches include most major Anglican and mainline Protestant groups, including the Church of England, Episcopal Church, Anglican Church in North America, Evangelical Lutheran Church in America and other Lutheran groups, United Methodist Church and other Methodist groups, Presbyterian Church USA, the United Church of Christ, and the Moravian Church. Some, such as the Uniting Church in Australia refer to it in non-gendered terms as Feast of the Reign of Christ. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Sweden, this day is referred to as the Sunday of Doom, previously highlighting the final judgment, though after the lectionary of 1983 the theme of the day was amended to the return of Christ. In the Church in Wales, part of the Anglican Communion, the four Sundays before Advent are called the Sundays of the Kingdom and Christ the King is observed as a season and not a single festal day. See also Christ the King Stirrup Sunday Totensyntag, also called Uigkisyntag References Topic. External links Topic. Pope Benedict XVI. Pope Benedict, Angelus for the Feast of Christ the King. News. V.A.